What's going on YouTube? It's the it's the master master head or the master bot or whatever the fuck you want to say. Um, I know in my last video I I've I guess I've drawn a little bit of criticism for for my thoughts on Steven Jackson and I mean agree to disagree, you know. Yeah, he'd be, yeah, he's going to be a good fit. He's going to be better than Turner, but I'm just stating the obvious that he's a little bit older and his production has gone down the past couple of years, so I mean, like I said, hopefully he can, you know, he's got enough motivation and he wants that ring as much as Tony does and he's going to, you know, give give it all, you know, give give his best. But there was some recent news actually that happened a couple hours ago and I think every Falcons fan can agree with me on this. Uh, Elvis Doomerville got released by the uh, Denver Broncos and we need to hop on that shit ASAP, all right? I know we got Beerman. We got Pariah Jerry, we got uh, Babby, but really those are the only three, those are the only, you know, reliable pieces. John Abraham's not there. Roddy White wants to bring in Dwight Freeney, and while, I mean, that'd be great. I'd love to have Dwight Freeney, you know, on, you know, third down. He's not an every every down type guy. He's, he's essentially another Abraham, but I think he's a little bit better. But we got to get on this, man. This is essentially the, the missing piece that we need. We need a, an elite defensive end rusher that can cause problems on the quarterback. You know, we can't let, we can't let Drew Brees, we can't let Cam Newton and company just sit, in the, sit there in the corner in the pocket and let them do whatever the hell they want them to do. It's been, I mean, honestly, for the past, since the Mike Smith era, we really haven't had a complete you know, pass rushing team. You know, we focused on, I guess the reason being is because we've been playing ball hog and we've kept our defense on the on on the sideline and their defense on the field that we really haven't needed to use or, you know, to grab big playmaking uh, defensive ends because we have just would use Turner and run down the clock and have the eight to nine minute drives. So our defense was always a little bit fresh. But now that we're kind of slowly getting away from that aspect, we're going to a more pass happy offense. I mean, you got to keep up with the trends of the league, you know. We've got to we've got to get our offense on the field every we've got to make sure that we can, you know, stop them on third downs. That's also another problem. We can't seem to stop anybody on third downs. I mean, I think in the um, in the San Francisco game, they were just it was like Green Bay just kept driving and driving and driving. We didn't score any points in the in the second half because we couldn't stop them. We couldn't make the necessary adjustments. We couldn't stop them. And the reason being is because our defensive ends were a little, they're a bit slow. I mean, John Abraham, he's 32, 33, of course. It's only not, I mean, it's it's human. You're going to get, you're going to slow down with age. This guy has just turned 29, like what, a couple months, two months ago. He's still, I mean, he is a boss. The guy is a beast. There, I mean, I don't, I don't see any other reason as to why we should not go after this guy and sign him and get him. I don't think I really, I don't think there's that much on the table in terms of the draft. I mean, yeah, you could probably find someone in the second round, someone, someone who is you know pretty good who can develop into a okay defensive end. But if you, I mean, all really the standout players, they're going to be gone by the time the Falcons get. Uh, get on the list. I mean, even, uh, what's his name? The guy from Georgia. Um, oh my God, I can't, I'm, I'm blanking, but, um, the defensive, the defensive tackle from Georgia, he's, he's going to he's projected to go a lot earlier than the, than the Atlanta Falcon, Falcons. And who doesn't need a defensive end? I mean, every team is going to need some defense. So, I mean, hell look, I mean, I mean, look at Seattle's defense. They just, like I said, they signed Chris Averill uh, two days ago. And, I mean, believe me, they're going to be in the playoffs and we're going to have to face them. And I would love, I mean, if they have Chris Averill, I would love to say, well, yeah, well, at least we have <laughs> a Doomerville. So, at that point, we can, we can at least breathe a little bit easier and know that our defense is somewhat good. I mean, our defense can keep up with the other team's defense. And make the necessary stops in order for our guys to win the game. I mean, our linebacking core is unbelievable. We have a great linebacking core. 
Our corners are, you know, somewhat okay. We're going to get Grimes back. Grimes went down last year. So hopefully when he comes back, he'll be healthy and he'll dominate the game. Our safeties are still pretty good. I mean, I hope we can – I think – I don't know what the contract situation with Asante Samuel is, but I think he's still going to stay. I, that guy played at an, at an unbelievable level, especially how old he is. Nandi Asamoah is still available. I mean, he just got released by the Eagles. I think maybe maybe just a change of scenery. I mean, Asante and Nandi played, played with each other. So, you know, I mean – Philly, the Philly media is always harping. They're always, you know, going batshit crazy whenever their team loses. Bring in Namdi also. That would be, be a great, great fucking... I mean, think about it. Namdi, Sante, and Elvis Dumerville, along with Sean Witherspoon. Sean Witherspoon all is practically the best... Uh, line, not the best, but he is one of the best linebackers in the game. I mean, I don't... And, then, and we also have William Moore. I mean, this... I mean, the team would look awesome. They would look stacked on paper. The linebacking core and the cornerbacks, they can they can only do so much. The defensive ends, the defensive tackles, they've got to do their job. And, I mean, we do have Bierman and Peters and Babby, but um, really that's not enough. I mean, you're going up against great teams like the Packers and the Saints who have great offensive lines that keep their quarterbacks, that protect their quarterbacks. you gotta get, you got to have some you got to have some hard hitters. So I think we need to bring in, we got to bring in Elvis Dumerville in order for us to even have a fighting shot at going to the Super Bowl. Because clearly the front two, the two front runners in the NFC are the Seattle Seahawks and the 49ers. And if you look at those teams, those teams are just, just I mean, <laughs> the defenses are, are sick nasty. I mean, it's just atrocious, not atrocious. It's ridiculously, it's disgusting. Okay, it's disgusting how... How uh, how great how I'm, I can't even comprehend. I mean I'm I'm, I'm blanking because it's their their defense is so sick. Now that they got Chris Averill, that defense is a lot a lot scarier, especially with Sherman as their corner for for Seattle. So, like I said, Falcons, you need to you need to hop on that. You need to get Elvis Dumerville. You've got enough cap room. You signed uh you signed Tony Gonzalez. You got um Stephen Jackson for cheap. You have a little bit of money. Harp, harp on that shit. Come on, Arthur Blank, sell one of your Home Depots. Get Elvis Dumerville. Bring a title to Atlanta so that Tony Gonzalez can go out a winner. That's all I want to see. He only deserves to go out on top. The amount of the amount of hard work, and I mean, he's been in the league for 15 plus years. The second best wide receiver, or the second most receiving yards in the game as a tight end he deserves to go out you got to do everything you can in order to get him to that to that ring and i think the only way to do that is by getting bringing in elvis dumerville and probably f trying trying to get one more or two more guys from uh from the uh from the draft just don't even draft any offense maybe a backup or two but majority of defense some defensive tackles some, maybe a safety or two in case Grimes goes down again or somebody else goes down again. Just hype up on defense. Our offense will be explosive as hell as long as Dirk Cutter can get it through his head that we have to use the no huddle offense. This team would be perfect. This team would be stacked on paper. And I think that they could become the greatest show on turf by putting up 30 points per game. But, you know, you got, you got to do it on the field. Paper is, I mean, you, if you look good on paper, that so what? doesn't matter if you can't perform. So, again, I think the Falcons should get Dumerville. I would love, love to see Dumerville on, uh, on the squad. So, do it, Blank.